Let me tell you another story. In the beginning, there was a woman and a man, and nothing else walked or swam or flew in the world. Until one day, the woman dug a great hole in the ground and began fishing in it. One by one, she pulled out all the animals, and the last animal the woman pulled out was the caribou. Then the spirit of the sky said to the woman, Caribou will be the sustenance of humankind. Send it out all over the land to multiply. In time, the land was filled with caribou. The sons of the woman hunted well. They were fed and clothed and had good skin tents to live in, all from the caribou. But the sons of the woman hunted only the large, fat caribou, for the weak and the small and the sick were no good to eat. I wouldn't mind them. Neither would I. But the people wanted only the fattest, fastest and strongest animals, and soon there were fewer of them. When they saw only sick and weak caribou remaining, they complained to the woman. Then the woman made magic and spoke to the spirit of the sky. Your work is no good, for the caribou grow sick and weak, and if we eat them, we must grow sick and weak also. The spirit heard and said, My work is good. I shall make the wolf, and he shall tell his children, and they will eat the sick and the weak and the small caribou, so that the land will be left for the fat and the strong ones. This is why the caribou and the wolf are one. For the caribou feeds the wolf, but it is the wolf who keeps the caribou strong. So, the wolf and the people are different, but there is plenty for both. There was, in the beginning. There is still plenty at my master's house. Come with me. The wolf and dog came to the edge of the forest just as the sun rose into the sky. Dog, your neck is bare of fur, and the skin there is red and raw. Why is that? Oh, my collar rubs a little, that's all. Your collar? During the day, I wear an iron collar, fastened to an iron chain, attached to an iron stake, driven into the ground beside my master's house. You're not free to come and go as you please? At night I'm set free. Chained to a stake in the ground? I would wither and die. Not at all. Think of the wonderful food I get. I cannot wear a collar, dog. I will not wear it. If you won't be collared, you won't do for guarding my master. Would you consider offering him some entertainment? I myself have been known to sit up and beg. I am no fool, and I will not play as one to amuse him. If you can bear your servitude, dog, then go your own way. I must go mine. But you may starve. I prefer my freedom to a full belly. I see. So that's why terrible stories are told about you, Cousin Wolf. What my master cannot own, he does not understand. And what he does not understand, he fears. He mocks and he destroys. You pay a high price for your freedom, Wolf. As do you, dog. For your comfort. Perhaps so. You could join me, you know. There's no chain holding you now. But my master will be calling for me soon. Must you always go to him when he calls? Yes. Why? We are companions, he and I. I am at home in his house. You belong to his pack. I do. And I do not. If you come too close, I'll have to chase you away, you know. He'll expect me of it. I understand, and I prefer to keep my distance. Will you find food? If it's there, I will find it. How will I know you're safe? Listen for my song, Deep in the Forest. I will. Farewell, Cousin Wolf. Farewell, Cousin Dog. <laughs>